I currently live in Jersey with my best friend, after being kicked out by my mother on Long Island, New York, for beating my pedophile brother. Me and my friend go back to Long Island frequently so I can see my old friends. We usually do our spooky route along Lee, Sweet Hollow Road, Kings Park Psychiatric Center, Stillwell Preserve, and Cold Spring Harbor. Nothing out of the normal happened, we weren't looking for anything scary, we just used the spooky route as an excuse to drive around. We were calling it a night after we drove around Cold Spring Harbor, and put in my friend's address to drive him home. We're following the GPS and to the left of us is a cemetery. No big deal, until we pass by it and the entire Mother Mary statue is abnormally lit up, as if it had spotlights all around it, but light only shone from the one right in front of it. The statue also almost looked, fat, as if Mother Mary and Buddha had a child, and there's two people in front of it. One is kneeling, the other is in front of the statue. Both me and my friend driving, asked out loud, what the hell are two people doing at 12 a.m. in a cemetery standing still? I suggested they were praying, but no answer sat right with us, so we turned around. We parked on the road, cemetery now to the right of us, I'm closest to it in the passenger's seat. I swear on my life, we yelled at the two people and what looked to be their clothing, froze in mid-air. One of them had something similar to a veil, and it literally froze in mid-air unnaturally after waving as if there was wind. The other had a blanket over them that did the same thing. When they didn't reply, me and my friends got really fucking curious if they were statues, since they didn't look like ones and were in weird positions for them. We pulled into the parking lot for the cemetery at the front and aimed our headlights at the two figures. I can't explain this part properly, but they morphed through themselves to turn around. They never physically turned around, their backs phased to their fronts to look at us, and all of us in the car got an overwhelming feeling of dread, evil, and panic. We left promptly, got down the rest of the road we were originally on, except our friend's GPS decided it would be great to reroute us back to the cemetery, which we never put in. We didn't even mark it on the map or anything. We just wanted to get the hell out of there. Even trying to re-enter my friend's address still lead us back to the cemetery. His phone has been fucked up with location ever since. We went back the following week to ask around during the day if maybe they have cult activity or anything paranormal that happens on the grounds, except the only dude there saw us pull up and locked himself inside the office. We walked up to the Mother Mary statue, which now looks completely normal and not fat or super lit up, only one light in front of the statue, no other lights around the back or sides, and there were two dead spots of grass, in the exact spots the figures were. A few years ago, I was working for a private security company and we were working an event at Carisbrook Castle on the Isle of Wight. There were probably 10 to 15 of us scattered across the darkened castle in winter. It was really early in the morning, probably around 1 to 2 am, colleague and I picked the short straw of doing perimeter walk where there is no light, not even from street lights nearby. So we have to do laps of the entire castle along the wall with the moat on our right hand side in near darkness. As we approach our second lap, near the longest stretch of the wall, I notice footsteps in the dark that weren't ours. We stopped a few times to check out this noise, but we couldn't pin it down to anything, and it could have been an animal moving in the dark. The next stage happened all in a few seconds, not really quick enough for us to respond. In the darkness I noticed the figure of a man walking towards me, 
he was walking up from the moat right of us. As he approached he said something along the lines of, all right, right Greeley. He then walked straight past us into the solid 12 feet tall rock wall. In a state of shock, my colleague and I just confirmed to each other we'd just seen someone walk into a solid wall and vanish. Not gone over. Not walked past but directly into. We raised the alarm for an intruder but after a side search we never found anything of this guy who walked up the slope. So my friend is a truck driver, he was outside of a gas station parked literally just an hour ago. We had talked on the phone and he seemed fine and is mentally sound. He called back absolutely panicking about 20 minutes later, freaking out worse than I have seen in a long time, if ever. He said he looked out his mirrors, and noticed a figure. It looked like this in his words an inky outline of a woman slash girl with a white dress. Green stem flowers with average pink roses designed on the white dress. He thought at first it was a person who was in the shadows of the trees just creeping around or being weird. So he turned on his rear lights, to get a better look at who was right behind his truck, and the figure disappeared. He thought at first it was his eyes playing tricks on him, so he turned his lights back off and the inky figure was there again. He of course was immediately terrified, as I would be too, and called me. He was inconsolable, screaming that he thought he was losing his mind, hung up on me to call his brother who is in med school, who told him he thinks it's stress and dehydration, low blood sugar, tiredness, or a combination of all those things. Even though this guy friend of mine didn't seem anything but maybe a little tired earlier. But does being tired mean you're going to start seeing figures of girls? Which I guess is possible in my opinion but I personally believe in bad energies and spirits. I told him to say some prayers, we are both Christians so I figured it might ease his mind, and leave the area right away, which he did. I was in my room trying to sleep, and all of a sudden, my house started shaking. There was nobody home but me, with mother being at her boyfriend's house, and my brother at my stepfather's house. But my house was vibrating with the sound of this, deep, deep tone. The tone got louder and louder and louder to the point that it sounded like there were giant house-sized speaker on each side of my house and one above it. The best way I can describe the sound was like an all-encompassing foghorn from a lighthouse. I was wide awake, and I ran downstairs and outside, where I could still hear the sound but there was absolutely nothing outside. My heart was beating out of my chest, I could feel my pulse behind my eyes. This is such a vivid memory and I know I didn't dream it. This happened last night around 3 o'clock at night. I couldn't sleep and was glued to my phone. The position I was lying in my bed was on my left side, facing a wall and only one headphone plugged to my right ear, still playing the video I was watching. As I started closing my eyes, already falling asleep, suddenly I hear a clear whisper in my left ear, as if someone was standing right beside me, which I still can't wrap my mind around since it would be physically hard to whisper something in my left ear, considering my position on the bed. It was a female voice, a little deep and the whispers did not form any words, 
only trying to imitate them. I immediately stand up and look around. No one was in the room but me. I try to forget it and sleep. As I lay there, I start recalling how a few days ago I noticed how my pillow moved a little as if someone's hand was moving it. And how later on when I was lying on the said pillow, I felt as if someone was brushing my hair off, because it also moved, and it's pretty noticeable since I have long hair and it suddenly fell to my face, with no wind in the room. I think my bed is cursed. When I was 8 years old, my family moved from my original childhood home into a 120 year old house with a lot of history. It was a beautiful house, but there had been a big fire in it many many years ago, and it was abandoned for 15 years. I really didn't like the house when we first moved. The energy felt off and I felt like I was constantly being watched. There were certain rooms, where the energy felt so off I refused to go in there alone. We also ended up moving my bedroom, after one to two years, because I hated the energy in the room and couldn't explain it to anyone. My parents wrote these feelings off as just being a scared eight year old, but the feelings about specific rooms maintained until we moved out when I was 18. A lot of strange occurrences happened during the 10 years I lived in this house. So much so, that in high school I started to wonder if I could be schizophrenic, even though these occurrences happened exclusively at home, and since moving I haven't experienced anything. I was constantly seeing things out of the corner of my eye, or hearing footsteps when I was home alone, but I'm going to share two experiences that really stand out in my memory. For my 13th or 14th birthday, I had a few girlfriends sleep over in the living room. Some of them had never been to my house before, and I didn't tell them anything about it, because I just wanted everyone to have a good time and not feel spooked. The next morning, one friend asked why my dad was walking in between our sleeping bags for a while last night. I immediately knew that wasn't my dad. My parents went up to bed while we were still awake, and my dad confirmed he didn't get up in the night. Another experience that I vividly remember happened when I was coming home from a party in high school. It was after midnight, but I was definitely sober because I drove that night. I was entering the back door that was in the backyard and opened into the kitchen. As I was putting my key in the door, I looked through the glass pane on the door. The view went straight through the kitchen and into the hallway near the front of the house. At one side of the hallway wall in view was a full length mirror hanging up. In the brief few seconds I was looking through the glass on the door, I saw a very distinct slash solid looking figure run out of the mirror. It looked like it was in the position that sprinters are in, when they crouch down to start a race and it looked like it was wearing a royal blue morph suit. The figure ran out of the mirror and dissipated into the staircase on the other side of the hallway. After seeing that I remember booking it to my bedroom, closing the door, and falling asleep with the lights and TV on. All of that being said, I believe whatever was in my house with us wasn't malicious. We took good care of the house, and I like to think that the spirits appreciated us for that. This happened just a few months ago at my high school graduation. It was a stressful and exciting day for all, and the only thing on my mind was crossing that stage. I'm waiting my turn as the rest of my row walks onto the stage, one after another, when suddenly, I feel something different, 
like a familiar presence. I push away this feeling, thinking it was just nerves, and continued my way toward and up the stage. I finally make my way across the stage and back down to the seats, but as I walk down the aisle, I see my uncle standing in the middle. He was clapping, a smile on his face. I was too shocked to react, but as I got closer he spoke and said, way to go kid. You fucking made it? Tell your mom thanks for the flowers, and then he vanished. I couldn't get my uncle's words out of my head and on the way home I stopped by my uncle's grave. I get there and I see a relatively fresh bouquet of flowers, my mom had apparently visited a day or so before. I had no idea my mom had left flowers, so when I saw them, my eyes started to tear up. I think my uncle told me about the flowers to let me know that wasn't just making it up. Whatever the case may be I am grateful for the experience as I never had the chance to say goodbye. I was 16 and was talking to my then girlfriend on the phone. As I was sitting on my bed, I heard a little boy screaming mommy. I asked her if she had heard that as well to which she informed me that she had not. We continued the conversation and about 3 minutes later I heard the child yelling again. Frantically I asked her if she had heard it and she began getting concerned, as she had still not heard anything. The house I lived in had a few neighbors with children, but it was almost midnight, so most of them should have been asleep already. Two minutes later I hear the child again but this time it sounded as if it came from my room, my dad was at work, so I was the only one home as my stepmother had passed away almost a year before. I didn't hear anything after the third time, and as it was 12.03 I got up to go to my kitchen to get a drink. I stopped right at the frame of my door, and for some reason I felt compelled to turn around. When I did, there was a boy about 8 to 9 years old wearing clothes from what looked like the 20s era, standing on my bed. He had brown eyes, dirty blonde hair and was just standing there staring at me. After 7 seconds he just seemed to dissipate and I couldn't move for about 15 seconds after. It was a Friday night, I was about 15 at the time and there was a good movie I wanted to see. I made a snack, got cozy under a blanket on the couch and started watching the movie. My parents were in the basement watching a show. Nothing really felt weird or anything. All of a sudden, my Scotty dog Kelly, who had been laying on the floor, lifted her head up. I only noticed because she was almost lined up with the TV, we had a console one in a big floor unit, 80s style, and I went back to the movie. A few seconds later she low growled, odd for her but not uncommon, sometimes one of our cats lurking around made her playful. Again, back to the movie. It got chilly so I pulled up the blanket to my chin, all of a sudden Kelly stood up and started growling. It didn't faze me much until she did it really deep and barked. My dad yelled upstairs and asked if everything was okay, I said yep. As I was saying it I started sitting up on the couch more and swung my legs onto the floor. And out of the corner of my eye with Kelly growling deep again our rocking chair recliner started rocking. Okay, cat, I thought to myself. I was getting creeped out and Kelly was slowly walking towards it like she was about to catch a mole in the yard. And then suddenly it was rocking and spinning, fast like faster than I had ever did and I was a heavy girl at the time. 
I stood up, ran downstairs, Kelly following behind and told my parents what happened. When they came upstairs my dad, who was also heavy, booked it up the steps and down the hallway into the living room. He never ran, so seeing it was weird enough aside from what had just happened. And sure as heck, the chair slowly stopped and swung to the position my mom would always put it in when she cleaned the living room. My dad and mom's eyes kind of widened and they both said, oh it's the cat, and went downstairs. I know what I saw, and my dog, I trusted her with my life and I think she saw whatever she was doing. I truly believe something that night was messing with me. Which in my old house wasn't as far-fetched with other things that happened. My friend and I were backpacking through Asia for a couple months, before moving back to the States. Towards the end of our trip we stopped in Phuket, Thailand, and checked into an Airbnb slash hotel for the night. The night we checked in, we had gone to bed as usual, sharing the bed as we had done the whole trip. I was dead asleep when I woke up to my friend clutching my arm tightly, with a look of pure terror on her face. As I looked at her completely confused as to why she's terrified, she said, do you see it? And shakily pointed to the corner of the room, on her side of the bed. I looked up and saw this large figure, moving and expanding and collapsing into itself at the same time. It felt as if the energy was being sucked from the room. It appeared a mixture of black and glowing, metallic red. It did not resemble a human at all, my brain really couldn't even fully comprehend what I was seeing. So, naturally I responded to my friend by shakily pointing to the corner as well, and responding, yeah, it's growing. The really weird part is the last thing I remember was pointing, feeling scared, and then I woke up in the morning. I fell asleep but it's more like I just blacked out. The next day we didn't even discuss it. We said, that was strange, huh, and moved on. Recently, years later, we compared notes about what we had seen and experienced. Our notes aligned in every way, what we saw, passing out, how we felt. 